Hi, I'm Frank Jernigan, and I welcome you to this weekly meeting of the Franco Sweater Knitters. If you'd like to become a Franco Sweater Knitter, or if you are already one, um, you can get a pattern at franco.com, which is spelled, as you see on the screen, in the very strange way, P-H-R-A-N-C-K-O.com. And so let me welcome the people who are here. Hi, Mary. Hello. Hi, Ron. Hello. Hi, Sumner. Hey. Hi, Jenny. Hello, everyone. Hi, Will. Hi, everybody. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Frank. Hi, Judith. Hello, everyone. And as we were saying right before I started recording, I sent out a newsletter yesterday, last night. And it's the first newsletter I've sent in over two years, it turns out. I thought it had just been a year, but, you know, time slips by. <laughs> so uh, I need to get better at, at marketing the products. Um, three sweaters sold today after sending out the newsletter last night. I think it just reminds people that we're here and, and oh, yeah, you've been meaning to do a Franco sweater. So let's go get it. <laughs> were, oh, the three, were the three sweaters all the new yoke? None of them were. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had a woman in the shop this week who was traveling through Bakersfield. And so look to see if there was a yarn shop, as travelers do. Yeah. Uh, and she found us and she found uh, our YouTube channel and found some videos where I had mentioned the Franco sweater and then looked up your channel and then came into the shop when she was in and asked about it for us. So oh, uh, she said it was great. just she, she was a relatively nude knitter and she likes the shape of set and sleeve. She thought seaming was mm -hmm. like a little daunting, maybe the advanced mm -hmm. techniques. And she thought it would be approachable for her. So I know I had at least one person through this week. Oh, maybe that's great. Plunge. I told her all about the meeting, too. So maybe she'll watch us. Um, yes, it was my intention to make it something that was approachable, that uh, a fairly new knitter. I mean, they have to know enough to know how to do increases and decreases and maybe pick up stitches from a cast on it or from a selvage edge, things like that but fairly basic skills. And then anything that's even the least bit complicated, I provided a video showing them how to do it. So my intention was to make the patterns available to, um, if not totally beginning knitters, at least intermediate beginners, <laughs> if you can, or, or in, beginning intermediates, something, something in that range. But it would, it would be available to people and it would work for like their first sweater. I mean, if you'd done a hat and you knew how to increase and decrease, you could absolutely you could learn to do this. That yes. could be your first sweater would be a Franco. Yes. And it would be so easy because you just figure out your gauge. You don't have to get gauge and you take your measurements and it's going to fit your person, not well, I don't know if they're a large or an extra large or <laughs> right. or a 2X or, or should they be a medium? And, you know, you take care of all that for us. Well, hello, Wally. You weren't here when I greeted everyone. So. Hi, Frank. How's everyone? Hope everyone Thank had a nice Frank. Easter. We did. Thank, Thank you. Good. Thank good. you. We ate too much as always. <laughs> 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 Isn't that what holidays are for? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Tim. Hi. There he is. Hi, Tim. Are you making tea? Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. Tim was making a meeting pot of tea, so he was excused from the beginning. <laughs> Just straight tea? <laughs> Probably. Uh oh. Well, it's I a mean, surprise. You know, are you are you an herbal tea drinker or something oh, yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, all right. Zane's tea. My favorite is High Mountain Taiwanese Oolong. Oh, all right. But um, I'm also a big fan of herbal or medicinal teas for assorted this and that thing. 
We'll see which one he made. This one is a blood orange tea. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's by, different. By Harney and Sons. They have great teas. Harney and yes, Sons. I'm not doing all that caffeine at night. No. Oh, I never drink I decaf past five or I'll sleep all night. Yeah. You will but sleep? But I got their Victorian London sleep. Fog. Oh, I love that. That's so good. I really it is like such it. a good tea. Yeah, I love that one. We get a lot of like herbal and medicinal teas from a place called the Secret Garden, which is out in San Luis Obispo, uh, up on the central coast here. And they have a lot of very, very good stuff. A lot of stuff that makes you feel very good, even if it tastes or smells horrible. You know, sometimes people will come in. I'm like, "What are you drinking?" <laughs> Never mind. mind. <laughs> but it helps. <laughs> I spent last weekend, as did Tim and some of our friends, at at the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo for the second John Waters weekend. Cool. Um, oh. the, it was a screening of the film Hairspray. Uh -huh. uh, and Ricky Lake was meant to be there, but it was the storm. Uh, oh. uh, California, oh, yeah. and she hydroplaned into a ditch. Oh, wow. And she's fine. Oh, no. But oh, she did not make it oh, to the gosh. event, but she, she mm. FaceTimed in, uh, <laughs> which was sad. I was oh, looking gosh. forward to mm, yeah. I had tickets to the, the meet and greet. I was looking forward to meeting Ricky Lake, but yeah. Was it a large group? Yeah. 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 For, for the screening itself, um, there's there's probably a couple hundred people. Uh -huh. the screening. And then there are different events that are like pop out tickets. So the meet and greet probably had, I don't know, would you say 60 people, Tim? Mm, 50, yeah. maybe? 50. Um, a smaller room. And then there was like an, another a dinner you could have separate from that. But it's a lot of fun. Last year was Pink Flamingos, which is a much different vibe than Pepper Spray. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah. But it was a lot of fun. So that's that's where we were last week. But it was it was a great time. That sounds like a lot of fun. I wish I'd been there. He's Maybe if you remember, man. you could tell me next year if it's going. I will. He, he's such an interesting man to hear speak, John Waters. Yes. Uh, just the, the career he's had. And he talks about like his books and the experiences and the people he knows. And what's interesting, like going as the film was beginning to screen and like the credits were popping up as who did this and who did this. He could tell you exactly where every one of those people were today mm. and like, really? what they were doing and like how many times he worked with this cinematographer or what this person's career wound up being doing. It was, it was very fascinating. Wow. Wow. Well, I have decided to take a challenge to myself and knit one of my yoke sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, not for publication. I'm just going to do it out of uh, yarns I already have on hand. Cool. And then, but I don't have enough to complete the sweater. So if I like how it's going, I'll buy more yarn to complete it. It's in multicolors, so I don't have to worry about matching. Uh, uh, what they call dye lots. Is this going to be a, a, a sport weight one or what? Yes, yes. Yeah. And here are the colors. Let's see. I can, let me spotlight myself. These are the colors I'm choosing from. Oh, oh. Nice. oh wow. uh, Knit Picks, Wool nice. of the Andes. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I have these yarns already. I must have bought them for some project that I then didn't do, but they were in my, you can kind of see through one of them because of the <laughs> screen. Oh, <laughs> it's not a ghost, people. <laughs> Natural yarns. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, so I did, I'm going to do uh, stripes around the yoke, but some of the stripes are going to have a, a pattern within them. So either two or three of the stripes will have a motif that repeats around. And um, then probably the body of the sweater will, below that will be one solid color. And I don't know, I haven't decided what color is, color is doing what yet. 
the motif with the stripes, will that be color stranding or slip stitch or? It will be ladder bag jacquard. Ladder bag jacquard. <laughs> cool. I don't know if you know why that's funny. I've been talking about it for, for several weeks <laughs> and I just published a, a newsletter. Uh -huh. And if you were lucky enough to get a newsletter from me last night, I there's did. a link to uh, the new video on Ladderback Jacquard. Yeah. But you have to have the link in order to see it because it's not public yet. Okay. So all of you people who see this video and didn't get a newsletter, I'm okay. sorry, but you're going to have to wait a few weeks before the <laughs> link becomes public. <laughs> see, you should have joined the website and signed up for the newsletter. <laughs> or well, some of us might be doing selling undercover copies of the news <laughs> <laughs> yes for quite a price I, I imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenny I, I didn't get one but you owe me because I sent you that other pattern so can you send it to me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And all of the people who've signed up for the newsletter in the last two years, you finally got one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was my first newsletter in over two years. Oh, wow. Um, and I was planning to do it monthly. And I can't believe Sidra's not here because she's featured in the newsletter no, with I many, mean, many I pictures. Yes, Sidra, we miss pictures. you. Yeah. <laughs> And her daughter was in one of the pictures as well, wasn't she? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like the question and answer period. It was like I could yeah. hear it in her voice. It was yeah. Right. Yeah, really through right. it. Yeah. yeah. It was good. So, Sumna, did you feel the shock the other day? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't either. I was driving and everybody, when I got home, everybody called me. Did you feel the earthquake? No. <laughs> I was on Will Rogers Beach in uh -huh. LA and I'm just laying on the beach mm -hmm. looking out at the ocean and all of a sudden boom and all the sand jumped in front oh, of me really? and what? I was like oh <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and uh, I'm waiting for the tide to go out you know <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> I think it's a night. I'm going to leave. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not a good time to be on a beach. No. Yeah. I, I got that. Pacific Rim. When you, yeah. When, when you, if no one's ever been to an earthquake and I've felt them at least three or four times in my lifetime, yeah. it makes me a little nauseous. I get a little like, like woozy, you know? And yeah. uh, I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> but my company is centered right there like oh, wow. literally verizon corporate headquarters is right there oh Whoa. so um yeah it created quite a stir at my work mm, i bet well you get tremors all the time in california so you don't even pay attention to them do you um I haven't felt you have one about, in years. You have about five minutes until everyone's Facebook pops up. But did you feel that? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we felt it. It was an earthquake, of course. <laughs> yeah. Everybody felt it. Yeah. Yes. Come to think of it, I have felt one Massachusetts. more recently. I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I go look them up to see where they were when I feel yeah. something that I yeah. think is an earthquake and usually find out it was. But but I've never felt one actually shake, shaking over time. It's usually mm. just a bump, like yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. A few years. And we get them enough in Massachusetts. Strangely enough, that yeah. I've felt two of them in Massachusetts. My but they're little. Was cracked in the last one. Oh wow! Yeah. What'd you say, Ron? I have concrete floors in my house, and oh. you know, the last moderate shakes we had put cracks all through my oh, kitchen yeah. mm. oh makes it look more homey and lived in yeah 
<laughs> I was through one when I was in the Air Force in Japan. It was 7.8. Very scary. Ooh. Not 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 a thing you want to go through. Yeah. You can Taiwan literally see the there. earth curl up and roll right next to you. Taiwan just had their biggest since the one in 99. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I saw pictures of yeah. that one. It was yeah. pretty awesome. Terrifying. Mother Nature is telling us something. Well, I had a seismologist put it very well. We think we're on solid ground, but we're actually not. The entire no, planet not. is on floating plates. Yep. So right. you do hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you do feel it. You mm -hmm. will experience it. So I was yeah. like, well, they're well put. But what's under the turtle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I loved that movie. Oh, don't. Don't drip on the sweater. <laughs> so, Cindy, we're all just kind of um, checking in and out of Facebook for this um, boot camp. And oh, yeah, you know, it still good. doesn't start for some time. Um, mm -hmm. And we have people from all over. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, we have someone from Taiwan and um, two people from New Zealand. And wow. yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm, mm. I'm excited. And it made me think of our person here who pops in um, from New Zealand that we don't see because of the time change. And I Was can't think of Dolores? her name. <clears throat> Dolores, I thought, wasn't it? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I can't think of her name, but she pops in, um, mm -hmm. but only after the time changes, right? And then her time changes differently. Right, because so she worked she worked uh, nights, and so she was just getting off. It was really early morning there, and she was just getting right. off when we were um, having it. Yeah, so anyway. Um, yeah, it'll be like it 7 a.m. for them, I think, when we yeah. start boot camp. Mm -hmm. Or 6 a.m. Yeah, mm. it's it's so fun to see all the different people and, and meet them and get to know them. Yeah. Is this a knitting boot camp? Yeah, I finally got my invitation to Suzanne Bryant's boot camp. Ah, oh, got oh. it. I, I literally feel like I got accepted to college. <laughs> like, oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. And how and long does it last? Really feel that way because I was on the list for six months. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you put yourself on the waiting list, and yep, you wait. Yeah. <laughs> and how long does the boot camp last? Uh, by the time I'm done, fifty-two weeks. Oh, it's oh, a whole wow. Time. So it oh, the my. first one's thirty weeks. No, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, and 10 weeks. So it's 30 weeks split over the year. So oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But, so really for those exciting. people who've got a time difference, Sumner, for, for those people who've got a time difference, do they just get a video of what went on then in the boot camp? Yeah, it's it's recorded. So like if you can't make a meeting, like if you have work or something, like so with me, it's in the middle of the afternoon on a weekday. Mm. Right. What do you do with that? Now, I've been able to work some of my schedule around it so that I could have off. Like, sometimes you see me on Thursdays at Kathy's meeting. Yeah. Because I worked out a day off during the week. I should be able to do that. But if not, it is recorded. And I do, you know, so I would be responsible to still follow the instructions, still take pictures, still submit my work for review. But by right. viewing the class, uh, on a time that I would be awake, you know. Right. Okay. But and, yeah. and that's, that's acceptable. Working. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. The, the other thing that you can do is you can always submit if you have questions about the what's going to be presented this week or questions about what was presented the week before. You can also post them and then she will address it in the thing, even if you're not there. So you can ask a question if you if you need help with something. Right. So um yeah, I'm I'm very happy with uh how the course will go, right? Because it's also like an online course and like anything else, sometimes you're probably just gonna want to watch it over again because maybe you didn't get it all. Yeah. You know, I have the attention span of a gnat. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to <laughs> watch it back and I was and I was there. You know, and I'm still gonna have to watch it back. You know, attention span of a gnat. And who knew that gnats could knit? There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Everyone counting? I am. I'm getting to the end where I have to do an increase, so I have to concentrate. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tim will sing. <laughs> oh, good, Tim, go. No, thank you. Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I didn't pay his fee. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Wrong row. <laughs> so, Frank, I have a question about your saddle shoulder um, okay. sweater. I haven't, I haven't knit one, um, but I just wanted to ask, do you... Um, how does that work? Do you knit all the, the saddle bits first and yes. then pick up stitches all the way around to do to do the rest? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. You start by knitting the saddles. And it's actually quite important to knit them side by side at the same time. Oh. Okay. And okay. Um, the reason it's so important is that, that the final row is a wrong side row mm -hmm. uh, well i can't even visualize it but the if you knit one and then knit the other they are not oriented properly to start the sweater oh, okay and, right, um, yeah. and so the pattern specifically says knit these at the same time yeah. and, um when I first published that pattern in the magazine, the tech editor said, oh, let's not knit it at the same time because a lot of people may not want to do that. And I said, oh, OK. And then I tried to do it myself and found out you have to transfer those one of the saddles twice to, mm -hmm. to reverse the needles yes. and then reverse them a different way to mm -hmm. get them on the same needles in the right orientation. Mm -hmm. And it's really right. hard to figure out what that orientation is. So instead of struggling with all that, just knit them at the same time. So, okay. Yeah. Well, you did make a YouTube on that. Uh, I The YouTube is on how to pick up stitches. I don't know if I talk about knitting them, do I? Yeah. Oh, you've seen. Oh, I've, I've seen all of them. Yeah, you, you <laughs> you've them. seen it more more recently than I have. I don't remember yeah. what it says. <laughs> well, I always go back on them because you know you forget. Yes, I find that's my favorite one of yours to knit is the saddle shoulder one. Is that right? Yeah, my favorite Franco was done in the Jody Long. Uh huh. Um. The Andiamo light, but my favorite Franco to knit is the saddle shoulder, of which mm -hmm. I've knit two, and both have been stolen. Oh. <laughs> stolen by well, um, well, don't announce that you're making them. 
when she sees them drying or blocking or anywhere around, they disappear. <laughs> um, but they are very nice. And I should make one for myself now, again. <laughs> again. You'll have to knit it in the closet somewhere. Again. <laughs> I should make it in a garish color that she will not wear. That would be good. What it, what is it that you like about the pattern? Why do you like it the um, most? I, I I think I I like the fit the most. So oh. I think this I have pretty broad shoulders, and why uh -huh. I started looking at your sweaters in the first place was it's always difficult for me to fit a sweater because the small, medium, large thing doesn't work. Uh -huh. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work. So if I just follow a general pattern. After I'm done fitting my shoulders, I'm wearing a belt. I see. Right. And I'm short. So I can always modify the length on any sweater. Yes. But right. um, the saddle shoulder sweater doesn't give me pointy shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right. Which makes it look like I have shoulder pads in. <laughs> you know, right. so it's it ends up it's just a nice fitting sweater. Yeah, so that's all. I mean, it, it is. It's my favorite Franco to knit. Well, the reason I did it was because it gives you the option of ha of starting a, a cable at the neck and running it across the top of your shoulder and then down your sleeve. And uh, I kind of like that look. I've incorporated it into a few of my designs. Yeah, it's Suzanne Bryant did one with lace. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's just beautiful. And mine are just plain as I'm working on getting better with my color work, right? Mm. Um, I would love to see how this could be incorporated into um, like a Franco. Mm. It's just how you would have to start your sweater. Because I, I kind of love these traditional Norwegian uh, patterns uh -huh. in the color work. Um, it just, I guess, you know, where do you start your pattern and how do you drop it down? And so it's, you know, I think it'd be doable, but um, definitely I would think the saddle shoulder would be the easier one to do that with. Well, you've got two seams to match in the sh saddle shoulder. Um, you know, the saddle has a, a seam in the front and a seam on the back of the saddle. Mm-hmm. Of course, you could do the saddle in a solid color and just put the pattern on the front and back and let the solid shoulder color go down the sleeves. That would be one yeah. one way to do it. Um, as long as you know what's going in the center, you've charted that out. You could begin it up here and then just pick these up with whatever and break the pattern at the increases. Yeah. So the pattern is across the front and back and then it grows out of the center. Yeah, a couple of years back, you had someone from France who made a uh, color work Franco that was just exquisite. And she even um, showed it on the website. It was on like in our meeting here. Like she uh -huh. came and visited our meeting and it was just exquisite. Um, so uh, yeah, it definitely can be done. But for, for, your, for the saddles for your shoulder, Frank, are they knit? In a in a in a strip that goes from the neck down to the shoulder. Yes, to that... to to the uh, start of the sleeve cap. Yes. So, but I'm just thinking if if um, someone is trying to get that pattern in, then you've got two different orientations of your stitches, haven't you? You've got one running that way, yes. and then the other one's running that way. So your pattern would look your a bit. Pattern odd, is not going to match unless it's no. some of the same. No, it's just not going to match. No, it's like in window it. painting, like you would do to get in, uh, in a one of the methods for avoiding jogs and color work pieces is window painting. You yeah. just make a stripe at the edge of each motif. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. But you still got the motifs running in two different directions, haven't you? Yes. 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 Yeah. But depending on what kind of traditional motif it is. 
you could always have, I think my, um, my one of my students in the Design Your Own Franco class that I had was doing an all over stranded pattern and the body and sleeves had two different patterns in them. <laughs> was that a saddle shoulder? No, that was a... Uh, I see. And so, like, I also like a baseball kind of sweater where the sleeves are just completely different than the body, you know? Uh -huh. So that would also work out well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you did, if you just chose to do a solid color saddle that then goes down the sleeve, go, then the whole sleeve can be that color. Yeah. It's funny because everyone's gone silent and the girl from Ipanema is playing on our shop radio. That's so very much like being in an it. elevator with nine people. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, no, I think for the most part, I've just enjoyed coming to this group because it just makes me a better knitter, right? And making Franco's and just, I've just learned how to read patterns better. So, yeah, I do recommend reading all the text in my patterns because a lot of the information is in the notes. Yeah. Yeah, your first couple patterns I printed up and used highlighter tape. Because as long as I just followed the instructions, it was like, oh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's when I thought I knew what I was doing. That, no, no. <laughs> Fraud that and do it again. You know, so that's kind of funny. I like you. So seeing what everybody else does, challenges you to do something different yourself mm -hmm. you yeah. see what somebody else has done you think oh i, I could do something similar to that mm -hmm. right yeah right. or especially if it's something where you think you just think it's something that can't be done right and then yeah. you see no but someone did it right like um like in tarja in the round right yeah it can't thank be done, you right yeah. yeah it can be done yeah yes it can yeah yeah. <laughs> That's in Tarja in the round. Yeah. 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 When I was just so frustrated, and then I saw Will come out with these beautiful Argyle socks. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get there. And then I did it. And I finally yeah. got there. Yeah. You know? And then Cindy did her one Argyle sock and never again. Which will, which will be the only one I ever do. <laughs> <laughs> so not everybody oh, gets inspired the same way although my daughter did see it and she wants one so she wants the pair so if it comes back and passes oh, I might have to make another one you may have to do that may have to do it you know usually the kids and the grandkids get what they want <laughs> but I would say in the round is actually when you get when you get the hang of it it's actually a little bit easier than the traditional Argyle method. Yeah. And because I think the traditional Argyle is just seamed up so strangely. Yeah. Um, it's just nice not to have to seam them. And my friend Patty loves her Argyle socks. Her pink and gray, like yeah. Oh, your green and highlighter. Gorgeous. Pink. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. screen and highlighter pink socks. She loves them. So that's kind of fun. Well, speaking of screaming highlighter pink socks. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, it's not pink, but I'll show you what I'm working on because they're 
screaming for sure. This is another uh, mini plea sock pattern, but different Ooh, color. Look at this. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. I don't I think I've wow. shown you this. I, I you think I've not that. shown us that. Okay. We wow. would remember. Yeah. So here's the heel and. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's gorgeous. That is so cool. Oh, wow. they, yeah. My husband chose these colors and uh, they're wow. pretty crazy, but wow. they're a lot of fun to knit. Wow. Yeah. Who's going to see them but him? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it looks no like. No one's going to be picking up his pant leg. That's for sure. <laughs> right? It looks like traditional Fair Isle pattern, too. Yeah. Yeah, it does kind of. I mean, they're. They are they're color stranded, of course, and yeah. There's the inside, and it's really cool. Oh, Let me write wow, down the name of that. Nice. For a minute, I thought that middle row with the pink was knitting three colors at once, but I see that the intermediate color turns pink as well. Right. So that's, that's pretty. Pretty. So it's awesome. only it's three colors attached, but only ever two at a time. Mm. And is, do you carry that pink one up from row to row? Yeah. Show us where you carry it up on the back. Let me turn them inside out. Oh, look. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that's your floats are so neat, Will. Thanks. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Very tidy, really well done. <laughs> yes, I hate you. But... <laughs> I know, mine kind of looks like a little scribble on the back. Yeah. <laughs> hate with love. So. What's the name of that? Okay, the pattern is called, uh, I think it's pronounced mini plea. It's M I N I P L I. So it's either mini plea or mini ply. I don't know. Uh, socks. It's on Ravelry, of course. And this is maybe the fifth or sixth pair I've made uh, with different colors. Sweet. Oh. oh yeah, wow. I love this pattern. It's great. It's really great. Yeah. Although I, I should say, to be fair, I'm using the chart from the pattern, but I'm doing my own sock construction technique from the toe up. So I'm not following the pattern as written. I guess I should make sure everybody knows that. I won't be doing that either. I'll okay. be doing a traditional cuff down with the heel flap. Yeah, I think that's how it's written. So um, if you like that, you, you'd be able, I think, to just follow it as written. And how many how many repeats of stitches do you need? How many multiples is it? So it's I've got eighty stitches on the needle, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like ten repeats. Right, so it's multiples of eight then. On, yes. On your stitches, okay, yeah. Yep, multiples of eight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for you to find it on Ravelry and put it in the chat? Sure. Yeah. I did I a search. I didn't find it. Oh, I could do that real quick. Yeah, yeah. I just have to log into Ravelry. Oh, I just found it. Yep. Minute Please Socks. Okay. Then you, you put it in the chat. Oh, I found it on my phone. Oh. <laughs> I, I've got it. <laughs> I'll hold your the... phone up then, Sumner. Just hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there it is. That should be the right link. Wait, isn't that fun? Love it. Mini piece sucks. Okay. Yeah, the the thing I love about there it so go. much is you can if you find three colors of sock yarn that you like that go together. You're in. It, you're in yeah you can just and then um once you do it a couple of times um anytime i'm shopping for yarn and i see three colors of sock yarn i like oh i'll get one of each of those and there's a pair of socks just make another pair of them and six dollars say 67 cents what did you say you do differently than the pattern call so i do a toe up uh i do them toe up and so i um I do an old cat boardy toe that mm. I don't even know if I remember the name of anymore. I've been doing it so long, uh, but it starts with Judy's magic cast on six stitches. And then um, it might be called like a star toe. It's uh, it's just like six wedges. 
that makes mm -hmm. kind of a, a star shape. Just a second, let me spotlight you for that. Here's the... Here's oh. The, see that? Oh, kind of like I the top see. of a hat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so I do that till I've got my, however many stitches I need, 80 stitches in this case. And then I um, do the color work pattern until I'm ready to do the heel. And then I've been doing a uh, fish lips kiss heel. I really like that one. I like the way it looks and I like the fit and I like uh, it's fun to knit and I can memorize it. So I do that. Oh, good. Yeah. And then uh, and then I just go back to the cuff, do some ribbing at the top, and I use um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, I think it's called. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because then I never have to worry about not being able to get the cuff over my heel when I'm putting the socks on and off. I love that bind off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're using DPNs? No, I'm doing magic loop. Ah, okay, yes. I yeah, see. so I've got one long circular. I see. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Well, that's great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Of course, I got so much knitting. I, I just, there's just not enough time. I know. Can you believe I have not finished a sweater this year? I can't believe it's April. I've, I'm on the sleeve, the second sleeve of my first sweater of the year. All the authorities. Yeah. I, I know someone should someone should punish me. we're gonna report you I know I'm gonna lose my knitting card or something yeah, that's right. we're gonna stop calling you a Franco sweater knitter yeah. oh, no. my license is gonna expire Annual Franco exam. Let's talk about counting stitches because I'm now counting 140 cast on stitches. Oh God, and yes. I heard a suggestion some time ago and I've adapted that suggestion and I can't believe, I never would have thought of it myself. And that is don't count one by one, one, two, three, four, five, count by some group. Mm. And the original suggestion was count by five. Well, I find sometimes I've made, I I grouped five, sometimes it was four, sometimes it was five, and then six. So I wasn't getting accurate counts. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do either three or four. Um, once you doing three is harder to count, but once you've done it a bunch of times, it becomes real easy to go three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. Twenty-two. <laughs> and four I've, is I've easy three because two, you like... you go four eight twelve sixteen twenty twenty four twenty eight thirty two thirty six forty so it, it's it's always two four I mean I can't say it four <laughs> eight then twelve then sixteen then twenty um so. I think if you haven't ever thought to do that, that's a really uh, good way. It it just speeds up the counting so much. Now, if somebody was saying they do that with how many stitches? I what? do three and two and three and two, three and two, three and two, three and two. Three and two, three and two uh, so yes. I don't lose what the last three was. You know what I mean? So I don't right. put them together. And then I use the, um, the bulb stitch markers when I get up. And I group them into 20s or 30s, depending upon how many stitches. Yes. I use a, a piece of yarn. Um, let's see. Like this. this yeah. I just have a contrast color. And that's 20 stitches. And that's 20 stitches. And yeah. I just loop the yarn through it when I reach 20 stitches, and then it's easy to count 140 from there. Um, yeah, it's a lot. I did the first 70 without doing that, and I thought, oh, no. 
<laughs> I should be marking the tw every 20. <laughs> we've, I think we've all been there. Like, how many times can we recount the same hundred stitches? Mm. Uh, yes, 140 stitches and uh, get two different counts. And then how many more times do you have to do it to convince yourself that which one was correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do in my beginning classes is to break the news to beginning knitters and crocheters that there are some things that they're not going to stop doing mm -hmm. you will work your tail mm -hmm. it yeah. will happen enough yeah. that you're, you're not going to get over that yes uh, yes it will not stop happening you will pick up your tail and you will work it you will get six stitches in and go ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, so don't work your tail but you will yep. <laughs> you will at some point you'll pick it up and work it right in <laughs> And uh, a recommendation, which I clearly have not followed all the time, is once you've completed your long tail cast on and you've got the right number of stitches, clip the tail so it's only short, long enough to weave in. Mm. The, not too long ago, probably a month ago, I started something and I did not clip the tail and it was very long. And I started working with it and got... <laughs> many stitches in before I realized I reached the end and it was the wrong thread and I had to undo all of those stitches. Yeah, I like to tie a slip knot into my tails that are too long and that way I know, or even multiple slip knots. <laughs> yes, that'll do it. Yes. Anything to prevent that disaster. Um, if you can use a hook, working it up into a crochet chain, Oh, particularly with something you're be using that's oh, long that or to steam with mm -hmm. later, yes. uh -huh. just chain it. Oh, it'll, yeah. get, it'll get mm -hmm. a third the size, yeah. and you oh, will like know that. you're holding it. <laughs> it will be very different. I like and that. Until one. you're reserving for some reason, like for seaming. Right. That's a great idea. I did a lot on those, all those chickens. <laughs> ah, yeah. The chickens. Chickens. I yes. had a customer come in the other day and she said, so I made my friend something that she guess she saw online called an emotional support chicken. Yeah. And I was like, wait here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's all the chickens. This is what you can expect on different yeah. weights of yarn you choose. So all my work at least helped one person choose a yarn. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's work through this. Well, I'm, I'm still working on my seaside tea. I took a I took a break from the body to um to do the neck so that the the, the neck's done. Now. Nice. Um, nice. That is so pretty. Um, that is. Um, so when I get to the end, I've literally just got to do the ribbing and the um, bind off at the bottom, and and then it's finished. So I haven't got to go back up and and pick any more. So uh, yeah. You, oh, that's you are almost it's done. Pretty. That's yeah. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. I've got about another um, four or five inches to go on the body. So um, maybe maybe next weekend i'm away for work during the week so i don't know how much knitting i'm going to get done so uh, we'll have to see <laughs> wait a minute you're away from work no for for, oh, work. for work oh okay yeah. I, I, I thought maybe you only to... knitted when you were at work <laughs> <laughs> oh i wish it would be nice all done yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah that's. I have to go up to the office, so uh, yeah, two days up to the office, so uh, yeah. I do occasionally sneak knitting when I'm working from home and I have a long meeting. Um, I occasionally position the camera and then I have my knitting underneath and I sneakily knit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did that. That's me. Guilty. <laughs> yeah. And have been called out for it. And then, <laughs> yeah. But then I can always recite almost verbatim what the meeting's been about because it's not yeah. that I'm not paying attention to your meeting. Right. It's just I'm doing so while I'm knitting. Yeah. So yeah. get or over it's it. It's just I'm, I'm not paying attention to your meeting. I'm just counting. 
<laughs> well, there's that. Yes. Yeah. That's funny. So who else has something to show us that they're working on? I have something no. I can show in just a little moment. Um, I'm up to here <laughs> in my oh, that's so pretty crazy lace top. I like the lace. Yes. Yes. Mm, oh. Wow. You see, sort of vague patterns emerge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're having a dream yeah. of lace. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so I've just started the shaping of the top. This is how I've annotated my pattern. Oh, wow. Mm. So mm -hmm. I've got like, um, oh, I think now. This is my, my Kindle scribe. I think I've mentioned it before, but this is the first time I have. It. So I have. Oh. I forgot I drew a Zentangle on it when I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was in a social studio. I was finished with that part, so I drew a Zentangle. So uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. You said this is you. This was what you used? A Kindle Scribe. Oh, it is um, mark upable. I see. Hi, welcome in. I'll be right with you. But um, unlike a regular tablet or something, it's got battery life forever because mm -hmm. um, it's a it's one of these digital ink e-readers so um i can just have it open for a long time with me wherever and it's mm -hmm. acrobatic enough the loading times are fast oh. you can do <laughs> and you, you you can read it easily even in the sun yeah mm, and you fun. can i mean it does all the tablet type things I can zoom in okay. and it, uh, you can export the markup that you've done hmm. oh so oh. like over here uh, because because of the nature of the crazy lace I've just made notes of how many stitches I expect to have between my markers at points when that changes so that we can keep that up because the the lace pattern is all arbitrary. All I have to do is make sure between any two markers, right. there is the amount of stitches I expect. That's number of stitches. And yeah. So it's it's a, a crazy lace row and then a plain knit row. And I use the plain knit row to check my stitch count to make sure I didn't take one too many out or put one too many in. And I'll just reduce it out or make a yarn over or something in that next row. And then you can tell. But also, while I was traveling, while we were doing that thing next week, I got a bug, and I I made myself a a crow hook scarf. <laughs> there oh, you go. Okay. Look at that. There it is. Very, Very nice. nice. Very nice. Yes. Try to learn to love beige. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. It looks it's great. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's almost like a pico stitch. P I C O T O T Pico. It almost looks like a pico. It does a bit. So you can see yeah. I love it. Between those mm -hmm. lines. And this is the back of a row. And yeah. here the brown is between these stripes that look like conventional Tunisian crochet. Mm -hmm. It's reversed on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So, Very, yeah. Tim, are you ready? Yeah. He's leaning in on me. I see him. Oh, yes. oh look at that. Oh, Yay. how cute. The, so, the knot work really makes it. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. So yes. cute. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Neat. That's great. <sighs> Just have a little bit left on one leaf to finish. Oh, no. Uh -huh. there we go. <laughs> yeah. oh, so you have knots on both sides. Yeah. Yep. Uh, nice. So is that a That's long eye cord that you've tied? That is, yes. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Two long eye cords, yes. Mm -hmm. They were about cord. two meters long each. Wow. Yeah, two meters long. Oh, wow. There's a wow. lot of eye cord. That's a lot of eye cord. 
It yeah. went pretty fast, though. Do you want to show your caveman? Oh, and it's just a head. Oh. But he, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> he altered the nose. Cute. Oh, that is cute. The nose was called for to just be like a just satin like stitch color. nose, like just a bit of embroidery. Oh. Uh, satin stitch, but he made a little nose. Oh, so, no. Tim, after years of me haranguing him, to do some amigurumi because it would appeal to his artistic nature. He finally broke down and now he's the amigurumi guy. Yeah. For like yeah. The last nice. year. That is. Yeah, he's been doing great work. Yeah. yeah. So you can see that the progress and just like it's gone from wait a minute, what to well, that's what the pattern says. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you know you made it uh, as a fiber artist, right. right? Well, this pattern had an interesting suggestion. <laughs> so, that's what we've been up to over here get this thing off of me <laughs> anybody so else I got my chicken all stopped I think I showed it last time without stepping mm. but it's got the stepping in the weight oh, and everything else yeah. oh, oh, that's cute. notice the tail goes up i added short rows notice the comb is correct comb for an orpington and the waddles there's two little <laughs> waddles waddle. like an orpington also the waddles that were on the emotional support chicken were actually turkey waddles they were not chicken waddles ah. <laughs> and i i worked the 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 head down farther and then put a tinier beak because the beak that was on the emotional support chicken was more like a sparrow and I didn't like that. So this is more anatomically correct. Okay. <laughs> anatomically <laughs> correct. Was, emotional had, support uh, chicken. It was really great. But now a couple of the of the grandkids want one. So see, I, we'll see I if you. I make another one or not. But you it's said, nice I'll make one, but the next thing you know. This was Oh, I know. You you can't just make one. They're kind of like potato chips. Now you've got a lonely <laughs> Orpington. <laughs> but this is, um, it was Juniper Moon Farms. The uh, the thread was 14. I had just a couple of schemes and um, that's what I, what I used it for. But it's got cashmere in it. Oh, wow. It's uh, merino and then cashmere. So it's like, it's just so soft and lovely. <laughs> uh, oh, here's your head. So she sits right in my desk. I'd, I'd lose it because it's not attached to anything. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> we have just a couple of minutes left. So anybody else have something to show? I'm looking right at you. <laughs> I'm looking, looking at, at you, me. Judith and Wally. Uh, and Mary. I... Uh... <laughs> I rested just, on knitting. I'm making a uh, go, Judith. No, no, you're starting. So, you started. No, I just I started a baby blanket for someone. Oh, oh, oh that's wow! Oh, that's so, it's lovely. a lot done. Yeah, already. one of our uh, waitresses had she adopted a baby boy. So oh, oh. wow! Nice. We're gonna give that to her. It, is that crochet? This is crocheted. Yes. Okay. Hold it real still so we can see the pattern. Yes. Right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's cool. That is really Pretty. nice. Yeah. I like that. There you go. Is your and yarn changing color or are you yes, using multiple yarn colors? Yes, the yarn is variegated. I see. So. Excellent. I started um, a knitting one with the baby rainbow, but then I couldn't find it anymore. And I said, well, forget that. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find it, I ain't doing it. So. Okay, we got one minute that's left. For she thinks she's getting away with it. That's the problem getting all the yarn and then you don't use it. You can't find they discontinue it. So. Okay, Judith. That's me. <laughs> I'm just using some leftover yarn. I've just done. A knitting knitted oh, yeah. scarf. Yeah. Look well, at that. Dry. And she says, I just did this. I mean, well, it's, what she it's, did. It's, <laughs> it's not spectacular. And I still had about 50, 40 grams left. So I'm doing a smaller one to wrap my hair. 
Cool. It's just garnish nice. stitch with um, um, eye cord edge. Yeah. Frank, I think the first time I met you, you were wearing your caduceus sweater and referred to it as just this. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I remember it distinctly. I think I think you have no room here. <laughs> it's just this little traveling twisted stitch caduceus that <laughs> all I have is this. <laughs> That's the only pattern I published that was not based on the Franco seamless set end sleeves. And um, it is seamless sleeves <laughs> and it's knitted from the bottom up. Mm. And then a, the what happens up at the shoulders is quite unusual, but it wasn't something that I wanted to continue to perfect. It just, it, didn't work as well as I really wanted to. So ever since, because it was knitted from the bottom up, the caduceus pattern is meant to be knitted from the bottom up. And now I'd love to use that pattern <laughs> on a top-down sweater, but I, I have to rewrite the chart. Ooh. So I just never got around to doing that. In case anyone doesn't know, a caduceus is that... Um, a sword with two snakes wrapped around it that uh, medical professionals use as a symbol. Oh, all right. It's called a caduceus. And I wouldn't know that except that my husband is a physician and he ha has informed me. <laughs> <laughs> I only know it because well, I was one of those Greek mythology kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> And that's what well, it looks like we have run over just a couple of yeah. minutes. So I guess it's time to say goodbye for another week. Yeah. Thank you all for coming, and I hope to see you again next week. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Nice week, everyone. Bye.